Hey gang, welcome back to the Geek Show. Um, I think in the last video I said I was going to go over, or the video before that, copying this to another computer. Uh, I, I think to go in logical order, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we've installed VirtualBox, we've built a virtual machine, um, I just want to go over some of the basics of interacting with a virtual machine. Um, so it has a lockdown on me. Okay. Uh, password. So I haven't put my license key in yet. I don't want to use one that I have uh, just for demo. The, the activate, you can go, I think, 180 days. And then there's when you buy your license. Your legal license. Um, think updates. I kicked that off right before I ended the video. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do a cumulative update right now. But it's it's Windows. It's a live Windows machine. It's going to have updates every second Tuesday of the month, Patch Tuesday. I don't want to optimize. Thank you. Um, so when setting this up, I said I create a base. So that way I, I want to test new software out. I want to try something. Um, and I don't want to screw up one of the machines I've already got. Um, which we can take a snapshot, but sometimes I, I just want a virtual machine just to test one thing to see if it's feasible, not feasible. If I like the software, I don't like software. So I'll spin up a virtual machine from my template which this is Windows 10 base so we're gonna shut this down show you how to clone it make a copy of it basically um, and then how do how to interact how to connect a flash drive connect a webcam uh, load a CD uh, for you younger guys CD is the little round shiny disk so with the machine powered off, what you want to do is right click and go to clone. And it's the clone joke. Um, so we want to do, we want to give this a new name. Win 10. Let's just go with foobar. Why not? Um, so the path that's in the last video or video before when we set up VirtualBox we set our home directory for our VMs as C colon backslash VM um, so here the MAC address policy um, a MAC address is a physical hardware address for every uh, networking component um, Bluetooth devices have it your cell phones have it um, your wireless card, your Ethernet port on your computer, anything that can connect to a network has a MAC address. And it's broken down, not, not to go into too geek. Uh, the first part of the MAC address, you can actually use a tool online, look up, and it'll tell you the manufacturer of the hardware. Now, it's not going to say Dell if Intel is the NIC manufacturer, but um, that's, that's a rabbit hole that we don't need to go down. But there are a block of MAC addresses that are um, not available for hardware manufacturers to use. So you can use those to, um, it's, it's what virtual machines use. You can have it generate a new one every time. You create a new computer or a new virtual machine, which is what I do. Um, you can have it clone what's currently there including the MAC address, include only the NAT, which we, we didn't set this up as a NAT. If I'm cloning one, there's a chance that I'm going to use it as a different name, uh, which name is something. If you end up keeping the computer, the VM online, when you clone, you, you want to change that name. Um, but we'll do this here in a second. So we're going to generate all new things. Going to go ahead and keep the hardware UUIDs. Um, 
just so if you've ever had to replace uh, or taken a hard drive out of one computer and put it into another one and Windows pops up and says we're not activated it's all new hardware um, it's because that the hard drive was in its home in the computer A and all the the devices and peripherals on it are completely different when you move it to another computer unless you're doing an exact identical computer to identical computer um, but I always keep that keep disk names the disk names that are generated with virtual machines are based on the name you give the virtual machine so if we go here Win 10 base it's the the disk these are these files are the disk um, this VDI right here um, I don't keep the name because it's on a file side on the window side on the behind the scenes side I want the disk names to match whatever I call it so we're gonna let it generate a new one full clone this is gonna create a whole new brand new machine it's gonna be identical identical name except for the options we just chose to give it a new Mac address and all that good stuff linked clone you basically have a parent and then you make a clone of that parent so changes can propagate down we're not going to go over that I don't do it um, I like things to be siloed so we're probably going to get this stupid yep so it's 310 well actually it's 610 my time I guess I never updated the I'm not worried about the time zone. Cue the Benny Hill. Okay. So now we got, and that took like two, three minutes. Seems like an eternity. So now we've got two separate ones. The base, I fire that up once a month, do updates, and then power it back down. Oh, probably more like every six months the next time I go to build another one. Um, but that one you can start up, run the updates, shut it back down, and then that's your clean, crisp template. So now we got FooBar. So we're going to power it up. Get the stupid sidebar min status, whatever. one of the first things we're going to do is we need to rename the computer the virtual machine within Windows um, and resize this so that it all looks nice there we go so right click on start go to system and one of the reasons that it's important to rename it is and I didn't rename my, my base one um, is if you have multiple if you do multiple copies or clones and you have them all online at the same time, all of them with their own IP addresses, and they all have the same name, you're going to start getting errors. So we're going to rename, we're going to call this FooBar. Yep, restart now. Will of Patience. back up in less than a minute okay
now I could bring that first computer online and there wouldn't be any network conflicts because they have the same name. So customize it just like you would Windows, however you want. Um, one of the things I want to go over in this video, bring this down a little bit so you can see a separation. Settings, if you need to come in here, there's certain things you can change on the fly, like we showed in um, in building this. You can disconnect the cable. Um, things you can't do is you can't increase the memory, you can't increase the, the RAM. Adding hard drive space is a whole nother topic we'll get into in a minute, um, or several minutes. But you can come in and do stuff, certain stuff. Uh, one thing is you can map a drive from your virtual machine to your physical machine. Um, so much like on my main desktop, my D drive, I've got a bunch of disks. Um, I can map the D drive to any virtual machine, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. Um, that way I'm not having to go through the network like when I was copying stuff over. I'm gonna go to other. So this is my physical machine. See all the network drives. So we can pick this one. Select folder. Mount point, that's a Linux thing, so don't worry about that. We don't want to do read only. Well, we can do read only, that means we can't make any changes. We can copy, we can read, but we can't change anything. Auto mount, make permanent. These are more um, Linux based, but just check them. So give it a second to think about it. So now we've got that. It's, it makes it easier if you copy a lot of stuff back and forth. Total side note, not important. Uh, we still have the the guest editions ISO attached, so come in here. Move disk from virtual drive. And now we got our empty CD drive. Um, so interacting machine here, you can take a snapshot. I don't recommend taking a snapshot while it's running because while Windows is running, files are changing. Um, a lot of this stuff is just not, it's not gonna be your everyday usage. AP, ACPI shutdown, that's if it freezes up. Um, instead of pressing and holding the power button in until it shuts off, This is going to force it. Um, and you can't always just come up here and hit X and it'll bring up a little menu. Uh, let's load it back up. I probably should have gone out of order and showed you how to add hard drive space if you need to. Because it's a computer, the hard drive is going to fill up. This physical machine has a 500 gig. Uh, formatted 480 something. Okay. And I honestly didn't check after updates how little space there was on the drive, but let's move this back down so it's. You can see it's. it's uh, was it? Uh, not virtuosity. Um, inception. And it keeps resizing. There we go. So, I think I said it's about 25-30 gig once you do updates and stuff. We still have half a drive space. I will show you how to add space. That's in a minute. Um, but I kind of want to go outside in. So if you, you can, you can record what you're doing. Um, Take screenshots. This is used for demonstrations a lot of times. This is just all your viewing angles. I just come down here in this little corner, grab it, 
and readjust as I need. Input. Let's say you need to send certain commands, but on your physical keyboard, connect to your physical computer, you hit Control Delete, you're going to get, um, uh, let's see, remote desktop should be Control Alt End. So you hit Control Delete to do the virtual machine, and it locks your physical machine. So you want to come up to input, go to keyboard, and send control alt delete. Or you can hit Windows delete. But since I'm remoted into the physical machine, that causes some problems. Um, but here you can send specific keys or key combinations to your virtual machine. So if we do So that affected only the virtual machine, did not affect the physical machine. Sound from the virtual machine will come through whatever speakers you hook, have hooked up to the physical machine. Um, but if you don't want to hear sound from the virtual machine, you have to mute the virtual windows. What else can we go over? Optical drives. Um, here's where you can select peripherals. If you had more than one sound option coming out. Networking, go straight into network settings. Connect another adapter. No webcams because I don't have a webcam physically connected into this. Um, let's go with something USB. This machine does have a couple of USB items, but we're not going to map it. This is a built-in uh, SD card reader. Um, I've got a, I believe, a USB Wi-Fi adapter in it. But this will be important if you're copying a virtual machine from one physical location to the next and you want to use um, flash drive. So I'm going to insert that into the front of the physical machine here not knock everything over I am going to do one of these videos on I've got my shop Mac mini here I'll hook it up remote into it um, and show you the whole process of copying from one machine moving it over and adding it to another without screwing it up like I did in the first video so even though I just inserted that USB because I've got the menu open it's not going to automatically update so you have to click out devices USB and now we've got that disk. <clears throat> it's a Bentoy flash drive. It's another geek thing. Um, it's a bootable USB drive where I can throw all these, these ISOs in and get a menu and select which one I want to boot to. Um, so that's how you can connect and once you connect it to the virtual machine through devices it's not here to use so if i were to go to here and go to devices usb and uncheck it nope, nope. now it shows up in the physical machine so what else on basic usage um I mean, you've got your icons down here. Here's your uh, hard drive light. You know what? Physical media. Let's put a... I just grabbed the first thing that had a CD, Blu-ray, whatever I could see. So here is the physical machine. Do I have a... There we go. So physical machine, it should pop up here in a minute. Hopefully. OK, 
Okay, clerks. So this is a physical machine. Now what I'm going to do is go to devices, optical drive, host drive B because that's I changed it to the B drive on the physical machine. So devices, optical drives, host B. Now hopefully this won't make a liar out of me. But now it has to go through that whole rewrite process again. In theory it should. It's not working. I don't often attach physical disks to a VM, so uh, you know it's egg on my face. Nope. Is there something running on here? I wonder if because the physical machine, it's, I still hear it spinning, if there's not some process running. Um, let's skip over that failure and move on. I, I will figure that out if anyone has a question and get an answer. Uh, so there's... That's the problem. There, there's some physical problem with the disk, the physical disk, and the physical machine. So we may revisit that. But yeah. So one thing I wanted to show is as you add stuff, this drive will fill up. Now you can keep adding. As long as you have physical disk space, which on the physical machine we have 360 gigs free. Man, what? I can't believe the the yeah. Boy, it is it is not being nice to me. Okay, um, let's go ahead and pull the flash drive out. So if you need to add space, um, so hopefully. Oh, where's it at? So shared folders, that's where I added this drive. Um, shared clipboard. This is a really handy thing. Um, notepad. So let's go to the physical machine. Notepad. So highlight it, copy, if I come in here, I can't paste it. So you want to enable shared clipboard and go bi-directional. That way you can copy from the physical to the virtual and from the virtual to the physical. So now, I'm not batting so good today, but now we can copy it over. So that, that is a handy thing you want to make sure you're enabled. Why it's not enabled by default, I don't know. Um, every so often, Oracle Box will come out with updates. Um, you'll get a little pop-up. You click a link, it has you download a package, you run it. It, it updates everything for you. Um, but with each one of those updates, the... VirtualBox guest editions will need to be updated also. You can either do it through um, upgrade guest editions or you can do it through the icon down here. Um, which it'd be wonderful. It works out that there's a, an updated version of Oracle Box while I'm doing these series, but probably not. So let's say the. I'm trying to think of any other useful features. Um, I mean, it's Windows. You get all the same annoying 
Yep, activation needed. We're right on that. Um, so if your hard drive does become full, what you want to do is shut down the virtual box. And this is, it is a real live version of Windows. So if you just close the virtual box window out, or the VM window out, it's the same as pulling the power cord on a physical computer. Um, or yanking the battery out if it's a laptop. Um, that's very hard on the operating system on Windows. So the next time you go to boot it up, it's got to go through and do a complete system check. Scan disk and all that. So we want to shut it down gracefully. Start, shut down, and all that. Um, now to add space... It's not anything in here. We need to go to machine. No, I'm sorry, tool, uh, file tools, virtual media manager. We want to select foobar and we want to go to, and that's one of the reasons why I changed the name of the virtual drive file to match the new clone name. So you can either right click and go to properties, you can go to properties here. And you can always add space, it's a little dicey if you remove space. So if you know that virtual machine when you're, you're looking at Explore says it's got 100 gig free, you can come in here and remove 50, 80, 90 gigs, no problem. Uh, Windows will cuss you out, but so right now we have a C drive on the virtual machine that's 50 gigs. We want to add a little more space, so we're going to make it turn my number lock on. So we're going to make it 60. We're going to apply. And just be careful, even though it says 2 terabyte down here, you can only go what you physically have. So the physical Dell computer has 360 gig free. We're going to go from 50, that virtual hard drive of 50 to 60 gig. And it's a multi-step process. So, okay, so that's taken effect. So what we did just now, adding that 10 gig, that's the equivalent of opening a computer and putting a brand new hard drive in it after you've copied or cloned the physical hard drive to the new hard drive. If you ever had to do that, like Seagate or um, what's, what's the other one? Um, you know, Western. They usually give you a, a link to go download software to do the cloning. Um, Close this stuff. Okay, so now if we come in here, the hard drive is still going to say, the C drive is still going to say 50 gig. Um, so what you want to do is right click on the start menu, start button, and go to disk management. And now we'll find our C drive here. This is stuff that it's housekeeping, it's required stuff. Um, this is actually the bootloader for the operating system. But we have this 10 gig unallocated. And here's one of the reasons I wanted to show you how to do this is Windows creates a health recovery partition. Here's what I always do with it. Well, son of a bitch, it's not going to let me do it. I am not doing well in this tutorial. Huh. I may end up having to redo this entire video.
since they're not right next to each other <coughs> I don't I don't need a healthy recovery partition Go to computer management. I want to run as an administrator. Disk management. Let's see if it gives me the option here. Nope. <clears throat> so I, I know how to fix this. This is probably just going to go two in the weeds. And this is something I should have done on the, the base setup. Uh, ooh, I'm going to have to dust. Going to run as administrator, yes. Disk part. Ooh. Okay. So one thing we're going to notice, oh, those are actually evened up, okay. You've got to check because the disk number here doesn't always match the disk in the other one. Um, it should, but there's a couple uh, wonky things. Select disk zero. List partition. So I want to get rid of this one. Uh, and I am doing this from memory, so bear with me. Um, did have to pause the video there for just a second to get the exact verbiage I needed. Um, So now we can come back and <laughs> now we got rid of that the, the health partition it, it's it's where like dumb files go uh, your b-side files can can sometimes end up there um, I've never had a problem deleting it in 20 some years well I guess it really started coming out with like Vista um, but now that these two partitions are buddy buddy next to each other we can right click, extend, and just select the defaults. Now if we close, go into File Explorer, now we've got a 60 gig drive. That went down a, a path I wasn't, hadn't planned on, um, and that's my mistake. Uh, looks like pollen count's going to be high tomorrow, so that's good. Um, I, I've I've got to figure out why the CD drive. Let let me pause. Let me finagle, and let's see. Okay, so uh, yeah, so here's what happens when you don't plan. Um, I remembered why one of the reasons I retired this desktop is because the uh, Blu-ray drive in it went bad. And by the time I got a new drive that fit the proprietary case and all that, it's like I said, screw it, I'm just going to build a new computer. Um, so I cannot, I haven't got some of these. These are uh, some pinning tweezers I'm trying out. They're Lock Monkey from UHS. Um, tried getting that in there, tried to get in really fine tweezers, tried some spudgers. <clears throat> um, so that clerk's disc is probably going to live in there until I physically tear the machine apart and pull it out again. It Because I wanted a Blu-ray drive that fit in that Dell Inspiron, I had to take a laptop drive, take the cover off, and put it in so I don't have where I can manually push it open anymore. Because um, I broke the mechanism. So, long rambling story, which is usual with me. Um, but... I do have USB disk drives, or CD-ROM, Blu-ray, whatever. Um, which, like with my Mac Mini, if I can find this here, 
So this is an Apple Mac Mini. This is one of the, I think this is a 2014 version. Um, after like 2012, uh, they no longer had drives in them. Um, actually, I don't think any of my Macs have a optical drive in them. So I have lots of... Uh, I don't want to unplug the yeah, screw. So I have external ones. This is one I picked up at Goodwill for like uh, four or five bucks. Um, picked it up. The, the the cats are starting to come in and ask what I'm doing. Uh, so bonus, I never actually tested this uh, external uh, external drive. Uh, but it came with a bonus disc. And that's when when I get VCRs or disc players or whatever, I like getting bonus discs. Uh, this one actually has a really good movie called Sling Blade. So here it is in the physical. So we're going to close that. We're going to go to input or device, I mean, USB. You could come in here and try it like this. But I'm going to come in and go through this. Ta-da! There we go. Long way for a short drink of water. Um, normally what I use optical drive for is adding an ISO image. And then you can do the same thing in, in any Windows physical or not. Um, but there you go. There's, there's a long story. There's some basic usage. Adding disk drive. Um... And maybe I should sketch out some notes before I do this stuff. Because um, I can go on to... Uh, you guys know I can go on to a, an hour tangent on something. But, in a nutshell, that's kind of some basic usage and some, some fundamental uh, maintenance or, uh, you know, adding disk space, whatever, connecting a, US, or a, connecting a CD-ROM drive. Um, no, CD-ROM, I kind of sound old in that one. Um, anyways, that's going to wrap this up. I think this horse is dead. Um, so, went over cloning, just some basic Windows usage, renaming, good housekeeping. Um, next video, I believe my plan is to, um, hook up my Mac Mini, my shop Mac Mini, um, get it on my network, and, uh, hey. Look at this face. Um, affectionately called Satan, because she is. Um, but go over more of the how I'm using this. This was all kind of a setup. This was, you know, kind of the foreplay of everything. Um, but we'll get into the meat and potatoes of how I actually use, or at least a modified version. Um, and hopefully that won't be another 40 minute video. Um, anywho, yeah. I'm losing my train of thought. I'm getting sidetracked. But as always, questions, comments, you know, put them down there. Email me, uh, what have you. Um, appreciate you guys wasting time with me. Hopefully you get something out of it. Um, like I said, I enjoy teaching. So with that, let's wrap it up, and I will catch you guys next time.